Hey, 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 what's happening, beautiful people? Y'all know how we do and how I do going live. Y'all know it is Monday, which means you know exactly what time it is. It is time for Message Mondays with Tony Briscoe and Gary Dotson. I'll be running a little bit solo tonight and won't keep you long because one, my heart's still a little heavy. And tonight, going to be talking about marriage, uh, marriage in a good way. Like it's still a little heavy, you know, because of loss of a loved one, but, you know, still feeling, um, you know, pretty good, uh, still feeling uh, pretty excited. I'm actually uh, charged up about some things that I do want to walk through and discuss on tonight. And so that's the biggest part of going live. Uh, so Gary and I have been going through the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, we started that last week, but wanted to pick up this week in a little different uh, area. And that is literally to talk about marriage. And so uh, the reason I wanted to just jump in with a quick shift this week to jump back on marriage, I know Gary and I have discussed it before on a smaller scale, talking about marriage, talking about the relationship between husband and wife, uh, talking about the things that people go through in their marriage. The reason I wanted to talk about marriage tonight literally is because of a sister, um, really good friend, um, love her husband, love her, uh, who recently passed away and just wanted to talk about marriage. And the reason I wanted to do it is because this sister loved marriages. She believed that every marriage had the possibility of lasting through anything that came up. Now, I know we ain't going to be getting into the big stuff, you know, the infidelity and all that stuff like cause it does happen. But I'm still talking about being able to endure love in a marriage. I wanted to talk a bit about the marriage model. As high as divorce is, even within the church. I still have had plenty of examples around me growing up of couples who have endured hardness as good soldiers, not necessarily knowing all of everything that they went through, but I am surrounded by couples who've been married 30, 40, 50, 60 years. All right. The marriage model is beyond possible. The marriage model, the hope that it's within marriage, the opportunity to stay married once you get married into that relationship is always great with two surrendered hearts that are living for the Lord. When I think about this couple, the Flemings, I just don't know the embodiment of love that you feel from them. And I keep speaking as if my sister Debbie is here. I don't like putting her in the past. I like putting her in the is. But I mean, just mean when you meet a couple who loves like they do, who teaches like they taught us. It's just simply amazing. I'm praying for my brother daily because I know his loss is great, but man, their love. Now let's talk about the model. Christ is the foundation of a Christian marriage or he should be right. And there's still room for growth in that. But the model is before us as husbands to love our wives like Christ loved the church and gave himself as a ransom for it. The model is there for wives to honor and respect their husband, for the older women to teach the younger women how to love their husbands. The model is already there. It's already built out in scripture, and I can leave scriptural references if you want to see them and read them for yourself after the show. I'll drop them. I don't have a problem doing that. But I'm talking about marriage on purpose, marriage with intention of sharing love, sharing relationship, and sharing possibility, sharing family, having a family, this coming together of two people to become one, this merging of hearts, this merging of love, the model that I've seen, the example that I've seen from our sainted bishop to our current pastor, and on down through the members in the body of Christ, the model is there. It exists. It is full of possibility, right? I was speaking to a colleague last week, 
and I'll bring my brother in. Speaking to a colleague last week, and during this conversation, I said, "Hey, man, you a newlywed? Like, how's how how how's marriage going?" And he was like, "Man, you know, it's it, it's going great." He said, "But I've got a problem." And I said, "What's up?" He said, "People around me keep telling me that I'm just in the honeymoon phase and that it's going to end and I should enjoy it while it lasts." And he seemed very disturbed by it. And I said to him, Gary, he should have been disturbed. Praise the Lord to you, brother. Praise the Lord, my brother. I said to him, brother, I've been married 20 years and I haven't stopped my honeymoon yet. <laughs> yes, sir. And I started to see his disposition change. And he said, man, I'm, I'm really glad to hear this. I said, look, I'm not faking the funk, bro. I've been on a 20 year honeymoon. I said, it doesn't mean that things won't come up. It doesn't mean that serious situations won't come up. But guess what? It's part of the honeymoon. It's part of it. It doesn't have to change. The model of marriage that we've seen often is not great. And part of that is because, as Moses talked about, allowing divorce because of the hardness of the hearts say that again yes sir the hardness of the hearts the flemings have lived a life that every marriage is repairable is salvageable if you center your relationship on jesus christ and him crucified and if he is the foundation so the model of marriage has always been there Always, always, you know, my brother, marriage, it reminds me a lot of how ancient mariners used to navigate the seas. Mm. And, you know, we have GPS and radar and sonar and you a Navy man, you know about sonar and high tech yes, sir. Yes, sir. navigation <laughs> systems and all that stuff. But they had the most simplest of navigation tools if you and especially if you're at night if you can find the north star mm. it doesn't matter where you are on planet earth on the oceans yeah you can find your you can find your way yeah. back to where back home or wherever you yeah. want to go based yeah. on where that star is because it's stationary yeah and like you said focusing on christ because his marriage to us as the church is the model. That's the model, period, end of discussion. And if you yeah. focus your marriage on how he treats his bride, yeah, you can he, make it. He long suffers. Yep. He forgives. Yep. Right? Forgives quick. Forgives quick. Doesn't doesn't recall it. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> I, I had to put that one in, right? He doesn't bring it back up. Love keeps no record of, of wrongs. wrongs. Doing. That's big. The, the, the model is massive, bro. <laughs> the, potenti the potentiality, Smokey. The potentiality <laughs> yeah. of looking through the proper lens yeah. biblically. Yeah. I didn't say through people who say they're Christian and they're doing other things. I said, biblically, through the sacred text that we've been given, the model is there to love hard. And that's the key, brother. When you say biblically, people people, people go into marriages and they, they, they go into their marriages a Christendom marriage. It's a tr it's a marriage that's based on Judeo Christian principles, and can you have happiness and have your two point five kids and a white picket fence and a dog <laughs> named Fight? Can you have all that? Sure. Can you have a lot of moments of happiness? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you can you live in peace for the most part with each other? Sure. Yeah. But the the goal in every marriage is to glorify God in the highest and in excellence. And to yeah. be a blessing to, to me. And you mentioned the, the Flemings. They were they not only did they do that, but because they were doing it biblically, 
yeah they were able to be a blessing to others and that's the added dimension where somebody who's just married based on judeo christian principles they can't ascend to that other level where their marriage has an impact long lasting yeah. impact on other people yeah yeah it it is I I just I would see him looking at her sometime and I'd be like, man, do, do I, I look, look at my wife like, like that? that? That's yep. what I'm saying. Like knowing that I desire her, knowing I have a passion for her, knowing you run up, you're gonna get done up. But it's like to see how they look, their public it was display, oozing from them, man. Bruh, their public display of affection was ridiculously done well. They bragged on each other. And it wasn't forced. Someone said in our covenant partners group today, don't try to find someone you can live with. Find mm. someone you can't live without. There it is, man. That's covenant, bro. That's it. That That's it. is the essence and the embodiment of a love. And when you look at all the things that Christ endures with us, when we say wedding vows, and I'm not knocking anyone who's been divorced because stuff right. happens. We right. get it. Bad stuff. Like, we really get it. Bad stuff happens. I'm not sitting here telling anybody. And so please, nobody twist my words. I don't want anybody to stay in an abusive relationship. I, right. I, I don't want you to do that. If you can't right. find the mechanisms to get help to repair it, you got to do what you got to do. I ain't in that mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm in the conversation today talking about the power of love that I've seen and that I've witnessed when hearts are surrendered to the Lord. And even those miserable, loveless, yes. hopeless, yes. seemingly no hope marriages, even they can be set. That's, that's Bruh, the I've thing. I've witnessed it. I've, yeah. I've, I've witnessed husbands gone. 10 15 years wow and wives like i'm gonna focus on work i'm gonna focus on raising this child and if the yeah. lord brings him i've seen it happen where the husband yeah. comes back in 10 years later gives his life to the lord and what the enemy had set up for bad i've seen too much of the lord turn it around for good. I'm just I want to talk just about the possibility of being married on purpose. Not because you got somebody pregnant. That's not marriage on purpose. I'm just I'm gonna hit it head on 100 right, right now, bro. That's right. That's not marriage on That's purpose. Right. That's marriage to cover up sin. The sin was in the in the intimacy before marriage. The child right. is not the sin. That's right. That's we right. all products of sin at the end of the day. That's I'm right. talking about the possibility to look at this person who you've committed yourself to in the midst of all the pain and the hurt and the challenges and the trial and to say, I love you. Brother, I still desire you. Man, look, look, bro. Look, I, I got to tell this. I got to tell this. Go ahead. Tell it. I got a sister. Man, I've been praying about this whole thing because, you know, I had to call. I had to call the brother one day and I had to say, hey, bro, hey. <laughs> <laughs> this this my fam. Yes, sir. So I don't really care what she's done. That, that this my fam. Mm -hmm. I can deal with her on what she's done to hurt you. Mm -hmm. But if you put your hand on her, bro, I'm coming. That's right. Right? That's I'm right. talking about this kind of marriage, Gary. Talk to this sister last week. They've been married forever. <laughs> Talk to this sister last week. The brother is getting the help she needs, and she said, "Tony, he's starting to sound sexy to me again." I, I know, I know, you've been praying for this, been praying over ten years for this, bro. But she's waiting to see what God can restore, man. To is. hear her going through this phase and this process of loving him again like that. That's a that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Marriage on purpose, bro. Bro, when you say marriage on purpose, you know, we always have to go back to, to beginnings. Yeah. And we're not trying to get super deep. We just two brothers having a conversation. Two brothers talking. Christian man, Christian walk, right. Christian talk. 
That's right. And God, he he created marriage on purpose. Why didn't God do any number of all of the infinite things that his mind could conceive of to bring forth children, to create the cohesive environment within the home through which communities, cities, civilizations would be blessed? Why didn't he do all of that? But he intentionally chose males, females, husbands, wives to come together as one flesh and bring forth children. Yeah. And he did that on purpose. Intentional. It was intentional even before the world began. Intentional. Yes. So when you know when when we're talking to married couples, we don't say that, hey, well, whatever, however way you got into your marriage, that's how you got in it, but you're in it. No matter how bad you think it is. And a lot of times we feel as if it's worse than what it is. A lot of times. And I'm not dismissing yeah, absolutely. the absolutely. real issues what you know that couples go through. But yeah. a lot yeah, of times we're not so heavenly minded, right. we know earthly good. We know right. what it, we we, we right. know what exists, right? We yeah. know yeah. See, God made marriage on purpose, and no matter how you got into it, he made the marriage institution to last, to be able to withstand any of life's vicissitudes. Of course, you know, those things that come up on the side, but his original intent yeah. was for the, this man and this woman to come together. Yes. And yes. be one, yeah. period. 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 Yeah. And so, man, I, I, I agree, bro. And so the model, we got it. It's there. Yeah. Let's move into because when I put the flyer, it says the importance of mentors. Because one of the things that happens is like as soon as we got married, we glued ourselves to the covenant partner ministry. Yeah, I mean, true. glued. True. Right? Like we know people, covenant partners, right? Oh, we got the Valentine's Day weekend or we got the end of the year ball. Now, we ain't care about that stuff. That's right. We, we cared about them <laughs> Friday night monthly sessions. That, that's yes, what we sir. were on. Yes, but sir. For years, we didn't really care about. I don't, I don't care about the Valentine's Day thing. And for years, we didn't even go. We yeah. knew about it, but we didn't go. Yeah, that's a moment. I'm, I want right. to know what's what is this? What, oh, so we got a covenant partner ministry. What is this going? Oh, we need we need to be in this. This is this is like me taking my car to the shop before I got to put oil in it. This is this that's is right. the prevent of maintenance. Preventive these are the, these, maintenance. These yes, are the sir. foundational tools that are going to help me. Like I, I don't sit here as no perfect, you know, be you know, I've taught these classes. People know that I had an anger issue when I got married, yeah. man. I was angry yeah. for no reason. Yeah. Well, there was a reason that digs back into childhood, but I'm saying I didn't marry perfect. That's I right. had serious anger issues that Nobody I had to get under perfect. control. That's you right. know what I'm saying? And I had to learn through covenant partners to put that work in. That's the importance, I believe. Just like you've got a spiritual disciple, everybody's got, hopefully, you've got a spiritual disciple, you've got a spiritual mom or a spiritual father, or yeah. somebody you can just go to who's full of wisdom when you're not. Yeah. That everybody's got somebody that they can go to. But the importance of the marriage mentoring ministry for me, and I like how they call it mentors, like that means you get to mentor us. We get to mentor you because when you're mentoring couples who are going through, you also get to see some holes in your own stuff. That's right. We're not counselors, right. mentors. Right. Me, I'm just coming alongside you to help you along the way. Exactly. Not right. better. I'm no expert at this because if not you're a counselor, that implies some level of expertise that I have attained to that you don't have that you right. need to go through X, Y, Z to get to. Exactly. No, a mentor. We just we just. Two couples coming alongside one another so we can That's help it. one another. Having That's fellowship. It. That's it. Ha having conversations mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and and keeping it that way, right? That's why I loved the sessions more than the celebration sessions that we had. Now, those were great right. because we had church and we got the fellowship. We got to dance with the saints. It wasn't no, you no, know, no issue with that. We got to have fun with the saints. But, man, it was those sessions when we started talking about, hey, how do you deal with this communication piece when you and your spouse are not on the same page? That's right. 
how do you have the conversations without talking over each other? That's right. right? And That's those right. are the tools that we were equipped with. And That's you right. only need the tools until you master the process. Brother, and you 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 said something that was deep, and I don't know if you realized that you said it, the the preventative measures. And those Friday night sessions, see, in marriage, you you have to be preemptive. You can't be reactionary. Now, of course, some things will hit you, will blindside you. Sure. Life. That's right. That's, that's life. Single, life. married. Yeah, <laughs> life's going to keep coming. Right. <laughs> right. But within everything that you are able to control and those things that you know are going to happen just by you being a person, by you being mm -hmm. married, by you being yes. male or female. Yes. yes. You got to be able to prevent those things by having a disposition like forgiveness. For, forgiveness is big in, a, in any relationship, but especially marriage. Yeah. And I've learned that you can't wait until the infraction occurs for you to make the decision to forgive you already have to have to have a you have you have to have a predisposition to forgive because your your wife is going to get on your nerves she's going to drive you nuts well. and, and ladies out there ladies out there i'm speaking for every husband <laughs> we are a collective hot mess <laughs> Hey, wait a minute, bro. Hold up, partner. Man. No, I'm you too. <laughs> you too. You too. I know you. <laughs> hey, shh. Yeah, we ain't talk about that. We ain't talk about that. <laughs> but you know, if you if you if you enter a marriage and function within your marriage, knowing that number one, you're imperfect, mm. and number two, you are in covenant with somebody who's imperfect. You yes. got to be willing to gloss over some of yes. those things and intentionally have a made up mind when my spouse does this we're good yes we're good and that's hard forgiveness is hard yeah yeah it it, it is man it is yeah. and you know it's you, know, you think of how we have to love each other mm -hmm. come on with all humility and gentleness with patience bearing with one another in love eager to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. That has to go into the marriage. That's the book right there. That's Ephesians 4, 2, 2, 3. That's the book. Well, 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 wait a minute. Why does that have to go into my marriage? Well, if your boss get on your nerve, do you quit your job? <laughs> so why does the world, why do we often extend more grace to others than we do to those who we walked into a covenant with? We should have that same kind of forbearance. Facts. I didn't say that two are better than one. That's in Ecclesiastes that two are better than one. Two are better than one. Right? So the mentoring piece, when 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 it when it came to the anger issues, and you know, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not gonna say my wife's name. I mean, those who know me, y'all know she is like yes, she don't she don't she don't argue. <laughs> I'll be like, Hur! she'd be like, Yeah, okay, you are. When, when you're done yelling, let me know you want to have a conversation. <laughs> it was like, it was like, it's like, imagine, imagine the Hulk. Yes, sir. And then just imagine Betty. <laughs> right, 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 right. You, right. When you're done and when you calm down, come holler at me, Bruce. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And so when you, when you have that kind of dynamic in the relationship, it was the tools of how do I have this conversation in a mentored relationship? Yeah. How do I have this conversation and communicate with my spouse in a way that's not going to cause her to walk on eggshells? That's right. Because who wants to live in a house where you got to walk on eggshells? Nobody. Right. And so basic communication tools like the yellow card. Where I'm whoever has the I'm yellow talking. card, the other person, all they can do is listen. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and paraphrase. Yeah. What the person is saying, not interpret, but paraphrase like itty bitty tools like that. Show me I had somebody, listening. somebody called me and say, hey, Tone, what was that card you were talking about that day? I said, oh, that's the yellow card, bro. Hey, mm -hmm. oh, oh, man. So I get to say whatever I want. I said, well, yes, you do. I would choose my words carefully. Right. But don't forget, after you're finished, that yellow card goes to your spouse. 
and you can't say a word. You have He's to. He's like, what you, what you mean? What you, what you mean? I said, this ain't a one way conversation, bro. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, she get she get it too. Yes, because you want her to get under. This isn't a card that says I got it. You just be quiet. Yeah, ain't no Trump card. Yeah, this ain't, ain't no ain't no Trump card. This ain't the Lord of the Flies, the conk that they use where whoever had the conk got the talk. Yes, sir. This yes, is sir. I said, brother. So you you gotta be careful because when af, after you get the yellow card, you have to pass it to her and say, okay, honey, is there anything that you like me to go over? You want to say to me, and I can paraphrase back to you to make sure that we're on the same page, that we're right. on one accord. Those right. are the tools of marriage mentoring. That's, That's why right. it's important. I find that, you know, one brother, he ain't paid me to this day. I pretty much erased it. I mean, it wasn't, it was like that much money. It's always about the principle of the matter. Like $10, yeah. dude, whatever, whatever. But when I, when he asked to borrow the money, I asked him what he wanted to use it for. He said, that ain't your business. Your money, but <laughs> not your business. And I said, brother, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give this to you, but just know this. If you're asking me to take money out of my household, that's right. And put money into your household. It is my business. That's right. So in the body of Christ, if we are to be bear one another's burdens, we have to lose this image of I don't want nobody to know what I'm dealing with or going through in my marriage. That's big, man. Now, it's it's big because people you have to be very, very specific in who you talk to. So I always tell people, start with your pastor if nobody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just start mm -hmm. with your pastor. Mm -hmm. And I I'm the assume. opposite on that because in my family, my family is a little different. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go to my pastor first. I would go to my parents who've been married 56 years. I would go to uncles but and you aunts. Got the, you got the model, right. bro. And that's what, I'm, what saying I'm saying for all, yeah. our, all our listeners. Yeah. If you don't have that, you know, at an arm's reach phone call mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Definitely go to your pastor. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Or or to to that those those people close to you that you know who've yeah. been in the game for a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. even if there's a widow, you know, a widowed husband or a widowed wife, like you you gotta go somebody. If you've been in the game 20 or 30 years, you gotta go to somebody who's been in the game 40 or 50 years. I agree. I believe in seeking the wisdom of the elders. Facts. Right? When I've tried to mentor couples, I could tell day one, I'm going to try one more session with them. And then I'll say, you know what? You all actually need counseling. You don't need mentoring. Yep. Need to pass it on. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and that's the, the role of a mentor is to make sure you stay humble, that you don't get a God complex thinking you can you can save people's marriages. You can't save right. nobody's marriage. It, it I, I know my told, <laughs> <laughs> you can't almost can't even. Yeah, I'm losing you a little bit, Gary. Save your own. If you're not humble, enough, you got it now. Yeah, yeah, I got you. My yeah. You're good. You're good. Okay, but 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 but, but exactly right. We as 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 ministers and as couples who are mentoring other couples, we have to know our limitations. We are Absolutely. not professionals, we are not counselors, and we're not equipped to get into the deep-rooted issues that happen in marriage. And truth That's be not told, our purpose. And truth be told, when it comes to saving marriages, you can't save a marriage. Mm -hmm. You can't save somebody's marriage. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, part of these important pieces, man, and the last piece I want to touch on before we get out of here is simply making it last forever. Keep sweat. Make it last. Yeah. <laughs> that was my high school prom uh, theme song. That was our theme theme for uh, that prom, 1990. <laughs> Make it last forever forever yes sir it's possible bro yep. yep we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses that's right a whole lot of forgiveness has to be on the table a whole lot of love has to be on the table a whole lot of hope has to be on the table 
That's good. A whole lot of practical. long suffering has to be. Matter of fact, just just go to Galatians five. The That's fruit right. of the spirit right. have to be on the fruit table the to make That's a right. marriage last forever. That's right. You'll embody all of that. You know, one of my good buddies, he got a a vision of the perfect wife. I'm like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you got a vision of that just shows you how jacked up it is. That's right. There's no per- because, no perfect wife. Yeah. She had a perfect shape until breast cancer came. That's right. He had a perfect build and physique until prostate cancer came. That's right. Now I've got to love you. You know, you're talking about a man who may have to have a surgery that can make him impotent. Bro, that, that's, that, that that's real stuff, man. Him. That's the, that hits the core of a man. That's right. That's right. You know, wives, they'll be cool because they don't, they don't, don't, sometimes they don't have the desires that we have 24 hours a day. Fact. You know what I'm saying? But it's like Fact. they see love is beyond physical for wives more than it is for husbands. That's right. But when we say in sickness and in health and poverty and in wealth, Till death do Til us death. part. Mm-hmm. That's making it last forever. That's right. That's right. You know something too. No, go ahead. You about to say something? Go ahead. It'll, it'll just. I, I think what happens is, the more we see the world view of marriage, mm-hmm. we have a show married at first sight, and you ask why the divorce the divorce rate is high. You got a show called Married at First Sight. It's a reality show. You see somebody and y'all just gonna do it and then you're gonna work through the problems that y'all come up with afterwards. No, foolishness. No. Absolute foolishness. And spe- you it's know, speaking this of which, world way of doing things. Yeah. Go ahead, Gary. No, Go just, ahead. Just, to, just to piggyback on what you just said and the reason why we have to really be adamant and shout this from the, from the rooftops that you can make it your marriage can last forever. It can last until one of you leaves, leaves here. The reason why we have to be so adamant about that is because of shows like that, because of this entertainment industry that's pushing in our faces 24 hours a day, 365, that marriage is cheap. And there's an entity or a person behind that mess, that message. It's our enemy, our adversary who hates the Christian home. Well, he hates the home. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Hates the home. Period. Hates marriage. Period. And he's he's pumping all this stuff through entertainment that cheapens marriage. I mean, you look at these movies, and I hope I'm not stepping on anybody's toes, but Tyler Perry. I don't like Tyler Perry. I don't like his 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 products. I don't like I don't like what he produces. Hey man, leave Tyler alone, man. I'm not I'm not <laughs> going after Tyler. Tyler's my dude, man. I know what you're All saying. Right, though. I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave that alone. No, no, you know, you know. I mean, it's 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 the victimization, right? There you like, go. Like we there we see go. the examples <laughs> of of marriage, you know, in the plays and things like that, where yeah. the woman is just victimized, victimized, yeah. victimized, where the man is always the aggressor, the aggressor, the aggressor, yeah. and then another man is the savior and the savior and the savior, and it it some of it really denounces just the ability of women to be women. Like the Bible speaks highly of women. That's right. You know. You know, that's right. And that's, just one, one, right? and that's just one example. Maybe, yeah. maybe it was a bad example. But entertainment is full of these false depictions of marriage that paints it in an impossible, in an impossible light that you can't have a happy marriage that 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 is mutually beneficial and glorifies God. Yeah. The, the, the reason I wanted to for me, for Tyler Perry, like a lot of people come at him and that's cool. Like Everybody got their opinion. But mm-hmm. I like how he still incorporates restoration or love yeah, yeah, that's true. or peace that's true. or forgiveness in his work. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. at the end of the day, I think some of his comedy has been safer than a lot of the other stuff that's out here. I that would agree with that. Witness. You know, I would so, agree with that. Yeah. 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 I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. We I, th- yeah. I, just to just to say that we really got to be super adamant about marriage being able to last you can you can make it yeah and it gets better i mean it gets better bishop said that many years ago he was teaching on teaching on marriage and he ended his 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 series 
I think it was a three part series. And he just said, it gets better. It does. It does. It, it really it does. It will. That's right. You put in the work. Right. Say this, that again. If you put in the work, marriage is work. It's as much work as it's as much work as parenting. <laughs> Mar <laughs> marriage is work. A lot of work. But this marriage in itself is our baby and how we nurture it, how we feed it, how we handle it, how we care right. for it, how we develop it, how we cherish it, how we educate it. That's right. These are the things that makes it stand out. It's a labor of love, bro. You know something last night, and I was I was gonna just shoot you a text. Because I was in a, I was in a way, I was in a space where I really didn't know how it was going to turn out, but I had to go to the emergency room yesterday. Okay. And I'll tell you about it later, but yeah. I'm bringing that up to say that, hey, I was telling, telling my wife, hey, you know, I can, I can drive myself or I'll wait until tomorrow. And she was like, nah, nah, let's, let's go. And she waited and waited and waited. And we were there till closing in on maybe three in the morning yeah we went at like nine something like nine been there bro yes sir we were there all that time long suffering yes sir that kind of stuff and she didn't say hey look i'll i'll drop you i'm going home i'm blah 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 enduring hardness as a good soldier and she wasn't there as you know just doing her duty yeah she was there because she you know she loves her husband concerned about her husband and a man so, shall leave his mother his father, and father and cleave unto right. his wife. I'm just going. I'm just going to keep throwing scriptures as you keep talking, bro. That's, that's, right. that's all I'm gonna do. Because th this right. is this is the power that we have when we center our hearts and our minds that's on right. Christ Jesus. I had a conversation earlier with a with an old with an old friend. You know, I'll keep most of it private, but mm -hmm. I said at the end of the day. I've y'all know my, my homies know everything about me. They know my shortcomings. They know my shortcomings when I came to Christ and they know the mistakes I made in Christ. And they've seen me elevate and grow to a whole different level. Yes, sir. If I leave you anything, it'll be the example of Christian living. I don't care about go. what other folks are doing. That's right. I don't care about how other folks say what they are and say how they're living. I'm leaving you the living embodiment of how God has created me and the life that I've lived before you. Go ahead. I don't live it in perfection. I live it in excellence. I don't live my marriage in perfection. I live it in excellence because That's a excellence, big difference. Just, excellence just means I'm putting my best heart, mind, soul, body to this marriage every day. Giving your best. Giving, giving you, best. you the best that I've got. Go ahead. Baby. Ooh. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's, I mean, but wait, but wait a minute. We sing all these love songs. I don't want to sing that same love song to three different wives. Come on. Come I don't want to repeat my vows four different times. Unless it's to the same woman and I'm renewing them. That's right. Like how That's long right. will we get we stay stuck in this perpetual cycle? of repetitiveness. No, I don't I don't want to repeat this. That's right. I want to make this love last forever and it takes a community and a village. It, man, I look it at the really couple, does. I, I look at the couple who came to Covenant Partners who none of us had ever met. They uh -huh. saw they saw they saw it online and came. And dude, to, to look at where they where they were and where they are three years later, bro, it blows my mind. It's like this is God showing possibility. Yes, sir. I can take your brokenness. If you got a mustard seed of faith that this marriage is that that's all you need. That's I just all need you need. To plant that. I'll send somebody else to water it. That's all you and need. He'll, he'll grow it himself. Man, I'm just talking about the possibility, bro. That's right. That's right. And you know, the whole public aspect of marriage, I want to return to that briefly. Marriage, in one sense, is private, is between a husband and wife, obviously. Yes. yes. But your private marriage is also a public ministry. I was talking to a brother 
I like that. Your cool. private marriage is yeah. also. I got to quote that one, bro. I'm gonna write that I, I down. Just, just came up with that. Just yeah. came but up with that. that. Yeah, it, take, take take credit for that one, bro. <laughs> but I was just talking to a brother, and and he was saying that he needed married couples to hang around. He's newlywed. And he needed married couples to hang around. And he told me that he was getting all kinds of advice. Oh, you don't need married couples. All you need is, is, is your wife. You and your wife, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. And in what you know, in a sense, sure, as long as that husband and wife are committed to one another, sure, they can make it. But to make it in excellence, to make it in increasing strength for everybody out there. If you're married, especially if you're newlyweds, you need the company of other married people around you. Because our Bible says that iron sharpens iron. You need to be around people that you can draw from, that you can pick up little tidbits of wisdom from. And it Absolutely. makes your private marriage stronger. Yeah. You know and what I'm Gary, saying? Yeah, because there are people who've come to Covenant Partners who've never spoke a word. That's right. They and they're were just on the there. verge of divorce. They were on the verge of divorce. Came in on the yeah. verge of divorce. And you got some who come just to be a part of the fellowship. Mm -hmm. They don't say anything. They just mm -hmm. sit there. They may have a little table conversation, but they don't raise their hand and get up and come forth as couples. They're just there to be around and to watch and observe. I remember it took one couple five years before they even started talking openly in covenant partners. Wow. Five years, bro. They was like, yeah, I know we've come here for a long time and we've just been quiet, but you know, we we've, we've, we we just feel like it's just it's time for us to start speaking up, right? Right, right, right. right. There's no force to share anything. That's right. But the love that people need to know exists. Yes. This is it's the love that people need to know exists, bro. It's and out that, there. Yeah, you can get it. It's it, it's it's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. It's ready. It's waiting. If your marriage in any kind of state or condition, I encourage you to get counseling. It could be Christian counseling. It could be a professional counselor who's not a Christian. Like if, if you desire for your marriage to be saved, salvaged and restored and changed where you get to look at that husband like it was the first day when you first saw him and caught his eye when you didn't pay him no attention thinking he wasn't looking but knowing you was checking him out if That's you right. want to look back again at your wife when she ignored you when you walked into a room and you spoke to her and she didn't hold her head up i'm getting a little personal right now but i'm just <laughs> saying like you want, if you want your marriage to return to that place do you remember the movie Indecent Proposal? Robert Redford? Yes, sir. Um, Demi Moore? Woody Harrelson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The million, the millionaire. The million, yeah, the million, okay. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We skip all that other stuff. We I think I know where you're going. Go ahead. I'm going right back to the end of the movie, bro. I'm going to the end of the movie. Right? That's where I thought you they were going. They went to the place. They just ended up in the same place that they met. To restore their marriage, bro. I thought because you were gonna go ahead. But you thought I was going where? I thought you were going to the place where right before she went to the place, she was uh -huh. in the limo. I think in the limo with the, with Robert Refford, and he was letting her go. And she said, I love Why? That part too. Because she'll never and correct me if I'm wrong. Right. right. You'll never look at me. She'll never look at me look like at she looks at him. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That that's that's beautiful line. But I right. go to where they went. On that park bench, and all he did was put that hand up to grab that hand. One of the most powerful scenes in a movie that was probably slept on by Facts. worst. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Probably Facts. slept on by most. But it's to say that it's possible that the Lord can sustain your marriage if your heart is surrendered. Facts. If you want to be touched like a virgin for the very first time in your marriage, <laughs> it can happen. It, it, brother, we, named, we, we, we named a lot of cuts tonight, bro. If you want it to happen, <laughs> it can happen. But in, but in all seriousness, folks, in all seriousness, right, right. Forgiveness 
is an everyday process. It is. I wrote a poem that's in my book. I can't mm -hmm. think of the name of it, but it talked about a wife being restored to her husband after infidelity. Yeah. And the the emotion that she wrestled with when you kiss him again, knowing that he kissed another woman. When you allow him into your body, knowing that he took that and went, I'm talking about, I have watched women love, I've watched wives love hard, bro. Yes, sir. And I've watched men buckle. Yes, sir. In tears at the desire to forgive. Right. The boundaries that exist, because boundaries have to go in place. Absolutely. Right. Once trust is breached, <laughs> boundaries going to come in. I had to explain to one brother this year, I said, hey, bro. You stepped out. If she needs to see your cell phone every night, That's you right. shouldn't care because shouldn't you care. are the one who violated the agreement. You don't get to dictate the restoration right. process, bro. Right, right. You don't whatever get, needs you don't... to be done to repair. Whatever you got to do. Whatever you got to do. What did Christ do? Whatever he needed to do, and it was going to that cross. Yeah, yeah. You don't Come get on, to. Bro. You don't get to dictate. And the same for the sisters. You don't. You don't get to dictate it. That's right. Right. And this is what that person needs to rebuild that trust. You got to give it up. You got to give it up. If she say FaceTime me when you get there with the boys, you better you better be on FaceTime. That's right. Got to check in. Yeah. E even when even when you haven't done that. Yeah. But you're guess what, to be man? checking in. It ain't ever got to go there. That's right. That's right. That's right. I know what temptation is. Oh yeah, <laughs> bro. When, when I when I put this on, bro, <laughs> the magnet came with it, dog. <laughs> You talking about having you talking about having the, the gauntlet, bro. This was the gauntlet right the here. Bro. Gauntlet, huh? <laughs> this this was the gauntlet. This was this this was like I was like Thanos. Like I just snapped the finger. It was yeah, like, all six six man, infinity stones. Huh? Sharita, Bonita, what what DMX say? Rhonda, Baronda. That was like the whole DMX, bro. They come out of nowhere. Yeah, like, woo, this yes, this sir. is new to me. What's your name, yes, girl? Sir. It's like it's gonna come. What's that old saying? Women always want someone. That someone has claimed they don't want somebody that's unwanted. Yeah, it's an yeah. old saying. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. brother Chase Penn. Penn says, "Keep it up, brothers." Go, oh go man, I haven't seen that family. brother in a minute. Bless you, Penn. My man, Ra right, Ra Chase. my man Ramel L is out there. Um, so this brother is on my album. We got a song, man, called the Old to Hip Hop, man. I can't can't wait for everybody to hear the album when it drop, man. Oh, yeah. uh, my man James Duke is out there. James, we got some work to do, bro. Coming oh up man, through, you know. And so my sister Davette, they they vet's another example of just pure love of a woman, man. Like, mm -hmm. man, folks are in it to win. That's right. I know That's we deal right. with tragedy a lot, man, but when it comes to this marriage piece, if we look at every killing. In Chicago, in the world right now, Elder mm -hmm. Hayes talked about the shootings in the South suburbs has been going on like crazy. Yes, sir. But just think, if there was a mother and a father in each of those homes. Now, I ain't saying it work out like that all the time because I know right, two sure. homes. Sure. <laughs> I know enough. That's but I'm right. just saying the if we want to shift the direction. That's right. We have to look at who we are allowing, if you're a single parent, who you're allowing around your children. That's right. You know, and some of, some of our single parents are, are, I'm sorry, what did you say, Gary? No, I'm sorry. And who you're making those children with. And who you're making those children with, right? Mm -hmm. um, our sisters who have lost husbands, like some of our single parents, the women are single because they lost husbands from accidents. Right. We don't even talk about right. them. We just we, we just want to lump our women and oh well, right. she shouldn't have had all them kids. Well, right. she didn't have all them kids. She had a husband with them kids and he died. That's right. You know, life life is going to keep happening, That's but right. the possibility to be encouraged, the possibility to make your love last forever, the possibility of having marriage mentors in your life who can help you and assist you if you do have things that come up. But right. we cannot let sex. 
and finances be the continued leading causes of divorce. That's right. We just can't right. because we're no different from the world. Now, I know, you know, we talked about Cardi B and her relationship with Future and all this, but have it work out. They still they still fighting for their love right now. Right. They still fighting for their love, bro. So right. if, if Cardi B and Future can fight for their love, how much I think I think it's future. If I'm wrong, Cardi, forgive me, girl. But <laughs> w- whatever the case may be, if the world can fight for their love, why can't with carnal we fight for weapons, our love? by the way, with carnal weapons. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if we who say we are filled with the Holy Spirit, facts. Come on. Why can't we fight for our marriages with more intentionality, with more purpose, with more intensity, with more forgiveness, with more love, with more mercy, with more grace, with more compassion? With more with thought, the weapons that really work, the yes. real weapons. Yeah, the real weapons. It ain't. I, I can't. I can't say that God could do anything and then say no. He can't do this though, brother. You know, this is what I believe. I believe that we sabotage our own witness to people, to unsaved people, when we have raggedy marriages. How? How in the world is your God able? to save me and I've been doing X, Y, Z, but he can't even keep your marriage together. He can't even keep your home in order. You can't talk to me. I need to get saved. Why? What do I need to get saved for? I got kids over here and they doing better than yours. Bro, you, 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 you kind of went there, man. (laughs) We shacking, we shacking, but, but we straight, we got an understanding. Yeah. Yeah. So the home, the that's true. Is a public is a public ministry, man. It's, it's, it's crazy the attack that happens on marriages, man. Right. You get you get a couple who's been living together 20 years, shacking up 20 years, and then they and get it's married. Soon they get married. Right. That's just letting you know that there's spiritual warfare attached to every marriage. And if we're not fighting that war on our knees together, if we're not putting in that work individually, there it is. man, bro. There it is, brother. You can't fight your spouse. You got to fight for your spouse. Ooh, boy, you, you you dropping some nuggets tonight. You dropping some nuggets tonight, man, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can't fight your spouse. You have to fight for your spouse. Your private marriage is your public ministry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why this brother is my co-host. Stop because the, boy, the brother be dropping it. some gems. I'm just riding your coattails, brother. Hey, family. We thank you all for your time tonight. Uh, we appreciate you all who tuned in. Please share it, um, especially for those folks uh, who are married. Uh, um, give us some closing thoughts, Gary. Then I'll close out, brother, and we will get up out of here and, and get back to the marriages, man. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just want to say that marriage is worth it, and it gets better with every passing year if you make up have a made up made up mind that yours is going to last, period. Your marriage does not have to be ordinary. It can be extraordinary. You can look at your spouse. You can look at your husband. You can look at your wife like you've just seen them for the very first time again. Facts. If you walk in that kind of love, if you walk in that kind of forgiveness, don't look at me for the guarantee. Tap into your relationship with the Lord. See the possibility that he's doing in other couples and don't compare your marriage to other marriages because you don't know what's going on. That's good. They close doors. They public ministry can be real good, but they private one can be. We we've seen it. Yep. Hey, if you believe in possibility, if you believe that your Lord and God can do anything and everything above what you ever ask or think, put that in your prayer for your marriage. And watch him work. It's your boy, Tony B. You are listening to Message Mondays with Tony Briscoe and Gary Dotson. Christian men, Christian talk, Christian walk. We out of here. Have a blessed week. We'll catch you all next Monday. God bless you. God bless you, everybody. Peace.